Okay, we are back, and today we are making onion rings. Um, yesterday, you had previously made your homemade breadcrumbs, which are going to be used in today's recipe to make homemade onion rings. Um, your first step always, like we've talked about in the past, on the ingredients list, you want to make sure that there's no preparation um, required before you start to follow the, the recipe um, instructions. So I see here that I only need a half of an egg for um, this specific recipe. So in order to do that, you need to find out first how much is in this one eggshell. So I'm going to go ahead and crack my egg into my mixing bowl, throw the shell away, take my fork, whisk it all up, and I'm going to go ahead and measure it out. So far we've got one tablespoon, two tablespoons, three tablespoons, and four tablespoons. So that means if I need half of this egg, I'm only going to take two tablespoons of this egg. Hello, we're back. Yesterday you went ahead and made fresh Italian breadcrumbs and today is your second day of the two-day lab where you will be making fresh homemade onion rings. Um, I have two things to show you today to start off your onion, onion ring lab. You have a whole onion um, which you will be slicing up yourself and I have also prepared um, sliced onions already so that I can go ahead and show you what they are going to look like after you do it. Um, you want to make sure that when you are cutting this onion that you do it crosswise, not lengthwise, because you want to end up with actual rings instead of up and down lengthwise um, you know, slices of onion um, so that you can actually get that actual onion ring look to the onions. Okay, for this onion ring lab you have two options and depending on what room you are in you will either be deep frying these onion rings or you will be baking these onion rings. Um, I am about to show you the baking method of how to make these onion rings. Uh, your first step is to add three of your ingredients into a small mixing bowl. Those three ingredients are some kosher salt, your flour, and your baking powder. What you can do is get a mixing spoon, a wooden spoon, and go ahead and just give it a good mixture before you're going to go ahead and dip those onion rings into this mixture. Okay. These are the onion rings that we have just previously sliced. As you can see, they are an actual ring size. They're not cut too thin so that they're not going to, you know, be flimsy and break apart. They're cut, you know, somewhat thick. Um, I'm going to go ahead and take this ring, which is cut crosswise, not lengthwise. I'm going to go ahead and dip it into my flour mixture. Get a, a nice even coating on there and set it aside. I'll go ahead and do one more. Okay, my onion ring. and set aside. Um, as I'm finishing off um, holding these onion rings with my flour mixture, I just wanted to show you a little bit of a quicker method of doing this. I just went ahead and threw all of my onion rings into that flour mixture with the baking powder and the salt. And I'm going to go ahead and just lightly toss it around so that each onion ring is covered and coated with my flour mixture. And after each one is all nice and coated, then I can go ahead and take them out one by one and place them on um, another surface like a baking sheet. Hi, and we're back. Um, our next step with our onion rings is to go ahead and combine our liquid and our dry ingredients. Uh, we have our bowl of flour mixture, which has the flour, the baking powder, as well as the kosher salt in one bowl. We've already kind of used that to dip these onion rings in there um, and set aside. And the two liquid ingredients that we have here to add to our flour mixture is one half of a cup of milk and that half of an egg, which wound up, in our case, um, to be two tablespoons. I'm going to go ahead and pour that in there. Okay, and you're going to go ahead and whisk all of these ingredients together. Um, a fork should work just fine for this. I'm going to go ahead and mix all of that around, whisk it up. Kind of creating a batter here.
Okay, and after that batter is created, we are going to take each individual onion ring and we're going to go ahead and dip it in that batter that we just created. Okay, so we're back. We are going to go ahead and take our onion rings and dip them into our batter. And then we're going to go ahead and coat this battered onion ring into our um, breadcrumb mixture that we made previously yesterday. This is in our mise en place unit because we have prepared these breadcrumbs ahead of time um, so that everything was nice and easy to use, ready to go for today's lab. And once that onion ring is lightly coated, actually, you know, I should say thickly coated because we want a lot of breadcrumbs on there to make sure that you get a crispy onion ring going to go ahead and place these on your lined baking sheet. I have already completed a lot of these onion rings for you so that you can see the final product and what it looks like. And once these go in the oven, they should come out nice and crispy. Looks like our onion rings are about ready to come out of the oven. They've been in for about five minutes at 350 degrees. And as you can see, they are nice and lightly golden brown. Um, and if you kind of you know, obviously don't burn yourself, but if you kind of just touch them a little bit, they are nice and crispy and they should be ready to eat. Okay, I am about to show you how to deep fry these onion rings versus the other option that you have already seen, which is to bake them. Um, you want to make sure that you use tongs to drop lightly and gently drop these um, onion rings into the hot, hot oil. Um, and what I mean by drop is to actually place them in there. You don't want to drop them because if you drop them and the oil sp splashes up, it's going to splash you in the face and nobody likes hot oil in the face. It's very painful. Um, so I'm going to use my tongs here and gently place them into the oil. You can do more than one at a time. Okay, and you're going to leave them in there just for you know a couple minutes until the onion rings are golden brown. Okay, it looks like our onion rings in our deep fried oil here is just about done. I'm going to go ahead and pull one up to see if it's ready. And it's nice and golden brown. As soon as you are finished pulling these out of the deep fried oil, you can go ahead and put them um, on a, a paper towel, you want the paper towel to go ahead and absorb some of that oil that's going to come out with the onion rings. And there you have it, deep fried onion rings.